this is a video on the effort to revive some of the memoristers that we have previously considered dead. The sample is a tungsten one, and they should all be dead. And uh, right now, the output of the function generator is set to around 25 volt peak to peak, and the pull up resistance is 1 kilo ohm. Uh, this one seems pretty alive. And at 10 hertz, 1 hertz. Back to 10, 1K, 10K, 100K, interesting behavior, 1 mag, 1 mag is not working, how about 100, and I can shift the um, offset voltage around, like so, well that looks pretty stable, amplitude is all the way maxed out. Uh, channel 1 is 2.9 volt per division and it's a vertical. Channel 1 is connected to the function generator directly. And channel 2, which is um, the thinner cable, is connected to the junction where the memristor meets the pull up or pull down resistor. The setting is 200 millivolts per division. And it doesn't seem like it's liking it. Let's go to 1 hertz and move it around and see what happens. Back to 100, back to life. All right, let's do some other resistors, other memristors, aside from this one. I'll shift it one by one and compare contrast, starting from the top. The top one looks completely dead. Let's see if I can revive it. Doesn't seem like so. I think there was one that was killed because I basically put it on 20 volts without a resistor, maybe like 100 ohm or so. All right, the second one. Second one seems alive as well. I can do the 10, 100, Move it back and forth. Reliable and, well, maybe not reliable, but definitely an eye that's very easily noticeable. And they also don't seem to have the same um, characteristic from one to the other. The next one. All right, the next one doesn't look great, but uh, it's obviously doing something. How about positive? Not much. Oh, that looks very alive to me. 100. Okay, that's what it looks like. Not bad at all. Leaving it to run for a little while. The amplitude is still maxed out. There are the settings. By the way, both of the probes have been set up supposedly correctly for one by one to one and one to one. And uh, they are not Timestim probes. It's not liking it. Push it. Somewhat alive, some not greatest. Alright, next sample. Might not be the next sample, but uh, okay, this one doesn't look great. One. Sign of life. Hmm. Seems like pushing it to the positive side revives the memory sphere. More or less a little bit. All right, that's 100 hertz. Let's try another one. It seems like the switching junk, the point, whatever you call it, 
the threshold for the switching is pretty reliable, at least for one continuous um, memory stir at the same frequency. Let's try one kilohertz. At one kilohertz, it's almost exactly the same location. That's really interesting. All right, move it back and forth. Uh, it's not liking it. But the switching point is still the same. I'm trying to get the eye to open up a little bit better at one hertz. And back to 100. Wow, that's really interesting. The eye opened up significantly and then shut close again. 10. Okay, that is. Like, for some brief moments, there are very significant changes, but not reliable. Back to 100. The switching point is about the same. Maybe back and forth a little bit. Okay, so depending on the offset, the switching point changes. Leaving it to run for a little while. And how about the next sample?